and welcome to Feed Your Brain. I am your host, Andrea Parada. Alzheimer's disease affects one's ability to care for themselves and others. Basic cognitive elements required to make good decisions become compromised. The disease is progressive and there is no cure. I am joined today by Jean Makesh, CEO of The Lantern Group. Hi Jean, how are you today? Hi Andrea. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So we're talking about hope today. So based on what we know about Alzheimer's, how could we as caregivers offer hope to patients and families? Great question. Um, thank you for asking. Well, in, in my mind, um, when you have hope, hope is a positive word. When you have hope, you look forward to something. You look forward to something. Um, the opposite of hope, I would say, is uh, disbelief or despair. And those, are, those, those words are not very positive words. Um, I always say that when we have hope, there's something for us to look forward to. Um, and, uh, and that helps us to live. We live to look what comes next. Um, when you talk to a, a good physician, um, they always uh, give you hope. They talk about medications, they talk about um, things that can make one better. Um, unfortunately, when it comes to Alzheimer's disease, um, we tend to give up hope. Um, the reason being is we've been told over and over, nothing can be done. It's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a progressive disease. Uh, there's no cure for the disease. Um, and uh, little, little can be done to stop the progression and uh, people are just going to decline and eventually die. Well, when you approach an individual with that kind of mindset, then number one, there's nothing, there's very little we will do to make the, the, the person's life better. And uh, it's kind of depressing for the individual too. I, I think the key thing is uh, when it comes to Alzheimer's disease or any form of dementia, uh, we as caregivers, we got to figure a way to continue to give hope uh, not to the senior, but also to the family members. Um, I think there's so much we can do as a provider, as a caregiver. Um, there are a lot of little, little things that we can do to create opportunities for learning, uh, make life fun and exciting. So I think the word hope is a very powerful word and I, uh, it's something that uh, um, we should uh, hang on to and stick to and uh, continue to um, pave, uh, pave path uh, and, and guide our, uh, our seniors uh, to embrace that there are things, there are opportunities that uh, are available or we can make it available for them to continue, continue to look forward to something that would help them to look tomorrow a better tomorrow. Do you think there's anything that I can do that could prevent Alzheimer's disease or any other forms of dementia? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there is so much, so much I think. Well, we that can gives do. me hope. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think that's that's important because uh, you know, when when we hear more and more often that nothing can be done, and of course that's very discouraging, very dis depressing. Uh, there's a lot we can do. Um there's so much we can do to decrease the risk of developing Alzheimer's. Uh, studies have shown that definitely there is a genetic predisposition. Um, however, there are other uh, things that do impact and influence uh, the disease, uh, the onset and the disease process itself, uh, the, the, the pathophysiology of, of the disease uh, and things like that. There's so much we can do. Um, I would start with uh, as, as simple as uh, uh, exercising. Hmm. Uh, daily exercises, uh, exercising daily uh, is will defin definitely decrease uh, the risk. Um, a balanced diet, absolutely. Uh, a good diet uh, helps with uh, uh, decreasing the risk. Um, what I really enjoy and like is, I think, what is it we can do 
to recruit more neurons. Neurogenesis, activities and exercises and learning that we can do throughout our life that will help with neurogenesis. Hmm. Um, not destroying the neurons, but giving uh, rise to new neurons. Um, how, what, what is it I can do to increase my cognitive reserve, uh, which is uh, what is it I can do to recruit more neurons, to create, to increase the cognitive reserve, um, and, uh, and also to facilitate and, and promote plasticity. Um, there's a word, there's a very um, a popular word um, or, or term called neuroplasticity. Essentially what it is, is our brain is uh, pretty much like a, like a plastic uh, material and uh, we can mold it and we can shape it the way we want. And we have the capacity to do that. Um, so um, I think there's a lot we can do to, to facilitate neurogenesis, uh, to increase cognitive reserve, and to mold and shape the brain like the way uh, we would like it to be. See, 20 years ago, the size of our brain was a lot smaller. As, uh, as with, with time and with, with time and with learning and uh, new learning and uh, excessive demand that the, the world has uh, subjected us to, the brain has to adapt. The brain has to learn those new things. Uh, 20 years ago, you, you didn't really have to work way uh, very hard or re really try to understand the diff different functions of a, uh, of a, uh, a phone. Um, and now when you buy a smartphone, there are little, little things that you and I have to learn. And there's a reason why the younger generation you know, our children tend to do better than us. Um, so th there's a lot of excessive learning that we have to do. And that really has subjected our brain to develop and grow. So yes, absolutely, there's a, there's a lot we can do. That's awesome. I'm glad you have given me hope. Thank so you, thank yeah. you very much.